Radio life and no TV. Millionaires stay greedy. No love and there's no grub. We got the homeless saying. Y'all better come my way. Y'all better come my way. Okay, and say. Y'all better come and my way. And welcome back to Jam Pack. Now, we have a very special treat for y'all. We've got the owner of the unisex footwear, Perry company shoes uh, which was created with the mentality of changing the perception of the sneaker industry the world that we live in today is ever changing and striving towards equality for all and the lines of division between women and men are making true efforts to fade perry company is in tune with these efforts prides itself on being a unisex brand and they are breaking gender barriers while delivering wearable versatility and style so whether you're in a suit or out with your friends they aspire to provide pieces you can wear on a daily basis uh, they believe simplicity allows the versatility uh, she's a lifelong sneakerhead that grew up facing a market saturated by sneakers made up for uh, made up for and by men uh, with few options marketed to women at the time. Uh, she rest- she resorted to buying men's sneakers, but felt the need for something more inclusive. So in 2015, she launched Perry Company. Perry Company. I'm so excited. Perry Company <laughs> shoes with the mission of creating a genderless sneaker that can appeal to all styles and identities. And you may have seen her featured as a business all-star in this year's August issue of the Ballers magazine on why she started her shoe brand. And just for y'all that are listening, 10% off is now available when you purchase online on her website. Also, be on the lookout for a Jam Pack discount code that'll be available on the Jam Pack Instagram, as well as the Jam in Thought blog on the Jam Pack website. Folks, she is bringing, she is breaking barriers, inspiring style, joining us from Chi Town. Folks, hey. I bring to y'all Brittany Perry. Woo! Woo! Dang, I love that <laughs> intro. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I got notes on notes on notes on Brittany over here. <laughs> you killed it. I like What's that. What's going on? <laughs> oh, not much, man. You know, winding down the year, trying to get prepared for 2021. So hopefully got some good things coming. Hopefully we can be out and about soon. So I'm looking forward to 2021 for sure. <laughs> Nice. That's dope. I feel that. I feel that. I like that. Now, for folks that don't know, I actually met or I don't know, I'm going to say met, loosely met, maybe <laughs> loosely met Brittany via Clubhouse. I've been on my little Clubhouse kick and Brittany was talking about her shoe. And I was like, that is so fucking dope because unisex. Cl- um, sh- We've talked about unisex clothes on the show before, but never unisex shoes you know well sneaker shoes we've had you know dressy unisex shoes but not your everyday unisex shoes that you can just rock whenever wherever you're at (laughs) yeah clubhouse is the plug yes i appreciate but clubhouse is the plug like just to be able to connect with so many people everywhere like through conversation like that it's just crazy so i'm glad that you were there we were there at the same time it was fate we were meant to be right. It really <laughs> was. It really was. And, you know, and it's so dope. It's black woman, business owned enterprise, entrepreneur, all of that. Right. Like that's, that's so fly. And, you know, I know everybody's had like their fair share of mixed reviews of clubhouse overall. Yeah. What has your experience on clubhouse been? It's been really cool. Like, um, I was there solely for like networking purposes to try to spread the word about Perico. I met a whole a lot of dope people, such as yourself on there, people that you know can help with the financial aspects of business, basically trying to help people come up with ways to increase their income. Like they're here to help us. So yeah. But it's also been funny too. Like there's some funny rooms on Clubhouse. Like, you know, you seen the moan room on there. I did hop yeah. in the moan room real quick. I, I kind of hate how they show you what rooms people are in. Cause they're like, oh, yeah. Brittany, you're in the moan room. Like what's she doing? <laughs> For real? I was like, man, I gotta just jump in and jump out really fast. Cause hey. 
now more folks that I'm starting to that I know are starting to jump on there. And I'm like, oh, fuck. OK, I just got to <laughs> let me just jump in there real quick. I'm just I'm doing investigation. I'm just being right. here in the I'm atmosphere. To- I ain't looking for nobody's moan. I just. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I was like, hold on now. Like the cash prizes, they, the little cash prizes up there, like six hundred dollars. I was kind of like changing into my that? picture. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. I was like, oh man, but it's just been pretty funny. Like I like I need the entertainment and I need the professionalism at the same like I need a balance of both. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty I, fun to talk about all kinds of stuff on there. Mm-hmm. I feel that though, because it's been really nice to network. And I, you know, I got my whole little you know, working through my biography of like what I want in my profile, my clubhouse. Pro- I have never thought that deeply about a profile bio before ever other than an actual bio. But, you know, I'm like, well, damn, like there's a bunch of people on here that I would love to network with. Like, but you only got one chance to shoot your right. shot, you know, <laughs> It's crazy, but it's cool though. Cause it's like, you can't really type people out. So you just kind of follow them. And then if you want to connect then you can go through external channels to do that. But yeah, it just shows that you got to put your best foot forward. You know, the things that you want people to know, make sure you put it right there in your bio. And um, it's cool that we're kind of in the early stages of Clubhouse. Cause it's like, not mm-hmm. everybody has access to it. So it's like, you really got to go hard right now to kind of network and get for in real. there for sure. Yeah, that's facts right there, though, because I I really have been like, well, I got to I just want to listen in or I want to, you know, connect, you know, like I'll be at work just and since I've gotten these uh, AirPods, can't tell me nothing. (laughs) So I'm just like, oh, I got I got a little networking conference going on in this year and I'm, you know, oh, you you want me to do something at work? Okay, cool, cool, cool. (laughs) But like, I'm just like, yes, I'm at the clubhouse. Like I'm over here just getting gems in this right ear, you know? And then when this battery start running low, I put it in the left ear, you know? (laughs) (laughs) You know, but what's been like the best room that you've been in? Um, the best room that I was in was at Women in Footwear. Um, Mm. I think, is that where I met you in that one? It was, um, um, I feel like maybe it was one of those like plug your company kind of thing. And then like they were just bringing people up to the to the stage. I love that. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna bring you up to the stage so you can speak. It took me a minute to realize why I wasn't able to speak to anybody. It was because I wasn't on the stage. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes they turn off the hand raising. So you like you want to put your input in on something, but you can't even talk. So that's the part that kind of sucks. But that the best one I was in was like a women in footwear um room so they had um Karen Civil popped in the room for a second because she's actually doing a sh- a sneaker with K Swiss oh shit and that's supposed to be coming out soon and then the president of K Swiss was in there as well uh so we were just talking about how we can get more women in the footwear space or why aren't there enough women in the footwear space so I got to go on stage for that one and plug my business real quick but um but it was really dope to just connect with other women that are into sneakers because like growing up I felt like I was a loner like I'm a tomboy there's nobody out there like me that I can relate to so I had a ton of guy friends and now like with social media it's just like wow there's so many other people out there that are just like me that like we're almost the same (laughs) you know what I mean so it's all dope but I was in that room for like two hours two or three hours and that's the crazy, and that's the dope thing though, because like you could be in a room and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna be in here for like maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And then it's like three hours and you're like, damn, did I do any work while I was know, networking right? in my right ear? Crazy. <laughs> but I mean, it, that was the only time I stayed in a room that long because the conversation was just so good. And I was like, dang, I need to go. Like, I need to <laughs> go eat. I need to do something else. <laughs> yeah. Easy. That's real. How was that being on stage and speaking with Karen Civil? Because I I didn't know that she was doing a sneaker. How was that discussion in that room? Because, you know, there aren't a lot of women um, in the sneaker. You know what? I'm a let's do some order of business because I just realized I broke the rules 
We have an amazing conversation already, and we have not established the games that we're playing in your drink of choice. So I tend to get carried away when I have amazing conversations. So here we are. I blame you, Brittany. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So um, Brittany's uh, drink of choice was uh, red wine, the Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, So we've got some Justin, yes. Yes. Uh, so that's actually my dad's favorite type of wine is the Justin, Justin red wine. So, uh, that's the first time having it. Yeah. What do you think of it? It's kind of smooth, it's right? It, it is smooth, but I'll have to plug yeah. it. Hold on. And it's, it's, it's kind of strong too. Oh yeah. You gotta flip around. <laughs> flip oh, yeah, around. <laughs> I to drop it on the floor, you know? Oh yeah. yeah it's all good. Yeah. Little Justin. <laughs> So I decided to take her wine, some red wine, and raise her to a sangria. Right. You have to so tell there me. we go. Cheers. Okay. Got a little sangria game. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> so we got the sangria. Mm, yes, yes, yes. That was the Bombay right there. <laughs> uh, since you are in Chicago, there's a little bit of a time difference, so... I figured it might be a little too soon to go straight to the red wine so early in the day. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> try I mean, to quarantine though. So it's like, you know, you're at home. So it's that's not true. Like, uh, so you can still go in a little bit. That's true. That's true. That's true. And the food just got here. So I'm like, yeah, I'm about to really eat some, some food after I drink this drink. Uh-oh, it's going to be good stuff. Eat first, then drink, cause you know, I, I've noticed sometimes mm, yeah sometimes it's better for me to eat after i drink so that i soak it up so but i try to eat before so i did eat before and then i'm gonna eat after i drink so to soak it up to me it's like soaking the food up so i'm like yeah i could just go crazy because i'm soaking it up (laughs) right okay i got you i got it just trying to justify the ignorance you know (laughs) so the other uh order of business is we are going to play story time today as well as key words so if we say perry if either one of us say perry shoes style or sneaker we both gotta take a drink (laughs) also it's either one of us say it so yeah yeah so if i say it we both gotta drink oh man okay we both have fault. Oh my goodness. Okay. I got it. <laughs> and then Brittany proceeded to say, Well, I'm glad we're not drinking Crown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking Harlem. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't make it out of here. Like, right. It'd be a wrap for both of us. Oh man. But yeah, I'm I'm so I'm so happy that you're here and um that you took the time out to to hang with us. Um you know, for you, and we kind of talked about it a little bit, like growing up, you're, you know, a little bit of, of a tomboy, and so was I. So I completely understand the struggle of trying to find the right shoe. Right. Growing up in Indiana, they they didn't have any footwear stores or boutiques. They only had, like, stores like Finish Line and Foot Locker. Um, and then you'd go to the women's side of the shoe store, and it was always a very small selection. And then you'd look to the men's side, and then it was like, it took the entire wall and then you ended up, um, you know, wearing a lot of men's shoes growing up, especially when playing basketball, you were also inspired by your older brother and your love for sneakers in general as well. Um, as, uh, as well. So having a unisex shoe is beyond needed. (laughs) That's, I wish I had a unisex sneaker shoe growing up. But what was the deciding moment for you that inspired you to manifest, to say, you know, I'm going to manifest this uh, childhood dream of mine into a reality? Um, I actually had the idea to start a sneaker when I was in college, but I was going to school for marketing. Dang, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> But I, had I think the, I broke it in my questions too, to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> but I had the idea in college, um, but I didn't know where to start really because I didn't go to school for design. I was in school for marketing. And um, so I just like continued. I graduated. Um, I got a corporate job in a conservative industry. 
So I couldn't wear my typical shoes that I usually wear. <laughs> oh, shit, we drink it again. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I was in a corporate environment. I was like, man, uh, I always like to be comfortable, period. Um, but after work, you know, if I go to have drinks with someone or if, you know, there's work parties, I want to wear a sneaker. Um that's versatile. <laughs> we just silently drinking and keeping know, each other right? accountable via via uh, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of when I got my aha moment because I was like, man, I can't wear my typical stuff that I usually wear to work. So I want to make something that's not only minimal, so you know it doesn't stand out too much, but I could also wear it with multiple things. But it's also comfortable and it looks good. So that's kind of where I got the idea to start my own sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> we had to take a pause to drink some more. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's really an incredible journey of how you started. And as you began your journey in the sneaker industry, you quickly discovered um, you know, how hard it was to connect with business professionals and consultants in that space, um, as well as uh, the financial capital required to get started. And then you actually started to reach out to your fellow designers to learn more about their experiences and creating their own sneakers. Um, you were able to connect with Quentin Williams, who's a designer in Atlanta, uh, and you had his... And, who had his own shoe line uh, and then you and worked with different types of brands doing freelance design and then began to learn about his journey in the industry. You learned about the process of creating a shoe, but you also dove deeper into marketing, business and supply chain, uh, the supply chain side of sneaker design in preparation of launching your first shoe. Mm -hmm. What things did you learn from Quentin that you still use to this day? Oh, man. Um, I learned a ton and luckily I can still reach out to him and ask him questions. So that's like the really dope thing is just, you know, a lot of people, not even in the footwear industry, but just people in general, when they have certain information, they just feel like they don't want to share, like they don't want to give up information. So it was just really dope to find someone that would be so willing to, you know, reach out a hand and help you, you know, at no cost, not this, maybe just for me, I can't say that, you know what I mean? But, um, but just to help you without expecting anything in return. Um, I think that's what we really need to see. And a lot of these different industries, because a lot of these industries are, you know, mostly male dominated spaces. So we really need them to kind of step up and kind of pull us along to get us in these spaces. Um, but yeah, he just taught me a ton of different things, more so on the technical aspects of what is needed for the manufacturers, like the measurements, the different angles of the shoes. So you have to have the front view, the back view, um, the order quantities. If you're trying to work with retailers, you know, you have to take into account um, the shipping. So is it gonna be shipped by boat? Are you gonna fly it in? So there's just all these different things that I didn't even think about uh, when I was just trying to make a shoe, it's just like, all the external things that are factored into pricing and when you're wanting to work with retailers and get them into stores, um, it's just a lot. <laughs> so I'm still learning too. So it's just uh, an ongoing process. How has, um, you know, finding that financial capital as well as your, you know, and your corporate background helped you in getting funding for building and expanding your brand? And how is finding investment in general been? Um, finding investment has been tough just because uh, I feel like, especially this year, you've seen a lot more companies say, yeah, we see that we've been lacking in uh, giving visibility to black owned businesses. So we want to help out. Um, we've seen, you know, businesses that have struggled during the pandemic. They're um, trying to provide resources for them to kind of stay afloat during this time. You know, I'm more of an e-commerce uh, first business. I am in a few stores, but I'm strictly e-commerce for right now. 
Um, so it's really not a need for me to, you know, have funding. So it's definitely been harder. I feel like when you're in the fashion industry, it's harder to secure funding. Um, so that's been difficult, but being in the corporate environment has definitely helped me with my business because I'm in sales. So like you're basically selling yourself, <laughs> you're selling your product and it just makes you think more into like, okay, what are the needs of other people? You have to think you know, what differentiates you from someone else? Why would they want to buy your shoe and not a Nike shoe? So it just makes me consider everything that I've learned in corporate and apply that to my own brand. So it's definitely helped a lot for sure. And being able to, you know, face rejection without a problem because I'm always told no in sales. <laughs> so at this point, it doesn't mean anything to me. Like, okay, just tell me up front if you're not into it or not, just, you know, don't waste my time <laughs> type thing. Yeah, yeah. So there's no, a ton of things that I learned, yeah. How do, but how do you continue to keep going and being resilient and persevering through these no's? And, you know, after a while, people get deflated. They get, you know, they start to reevaluate if this is even a passion or road or a path that they want to continue down. What was it that kept you going? Um, there's a few moments where I did feel like giving up. Like I said, I'm in corporate, so I'm in sales. So if I'm not selling anything with my job, I don't have the money to do things. So I was just like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, have the resources to keep doing this. And um, at that time, I didn't even have like an Instagram or anything set up. And my friend was like, you should just start like an Instagram. So, you know, people can see the process of you starting the shoe and you can have like a base there. So when you're finally ready to put product out, then they're there and I was like I don't know like I'm kind of unsure I don't want people to steal like my designs and it's not how I want it to look so I kind of like had self-doubt there but I put it out and then uh, people oh this is so dope like you know you just have thoughts in your head like you kind of hold yourself back it'd be your own self sometimes it's just like you get in your own head but you really just have to put things out there because you never know what people like like you got to get the feedback for people to see if it's worth pursuing um so I put it out there and then um a couple of designers were like hey can you you know sponsor a fashion show that I'm doing um I was like yeah I'll do it for free like <laughs> I didn't even think I'd be at this point so there's been a, a few different points where I was just like man we really need um the visibility because like I said when I was growing up I wore men's shoes and the only people that had sneakers were athletes. Like I would never think that it would be possible for someone that looks like me to start a brand. So now I think now more than ever, it's crucial to, you know, be an inspiration to other young women or men, especially people of color that, you know, it's possible you don't have to work for a large company. You know, it doesn't have to be Nike or Adidas. If you want to start your own shoe, then you can do that. So I definitely just want to be an inspiration for the younger generations to come. You are absolutely an inspiration because, again, like I said, I wish there was a Brittany Perry uh, growing up. You know, when I was looking for shoes, I, I literally all I wore was like Nike, maybe Adidas. Um, yeah. You know, I it was basketball shoes. I played basketball and softball growing up. I was a tomboy. I did a little yeah. little thing of soccer and swimming here and there, but I still was very much so a tomboy. Mm -hmm. What do you wish the What do you wish the younger Britney would have known about where Britney is now? Oh, that's a good question. So you want to know what I would want to know? What would my younger self want to know now? Yeah. What would you tell your Man. younger self now? Yeah. I would tell myself everything that's going on right now is like for a reason. Because if I didn't go through those things, like if I didn't live in that specific market in Indiana where we didn't have access to shoes, and then another part of that is, you know, everybody had on the same shoes and I, I wanted to look different. Like I didn't want to have the same shoes on on Monday, you know, when the Jordans drop on Saturday, everybody has the same thing on Monday. Um, 
sure all those did. things that happen, <laughs> <laughs> all those things that happen, were going to get me to where I am now. So it's just like, enjoy all of those experiences and you might feel different now, but there's other people out there that are going through the same thing you're going through. It's just, you don't know them yet. So just be you and like, always stay true to yourself because that's who you are and you'll, you'll be fine. And if I know that, then I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna keep my shoes. I should have kept my shoes. <laughs> I should have kept the shoes that I sold off or, you know, gave to Goodwill because they'll be worth like five times the amount. <laughs> <Ain't that> right? <laughs> Did you ever, like, growing up, did you ever say, I want to be a professional basketball player? Like, I want to play in the WNBA. That was my main dream. I wanted to play in the WNBA. I did. Yeah. But uh, my my high school coach sucked. (laughs) And I kind of lost passion for the game just because, like, this was the era of, you know, the fours and the fives. Mm-hmm. you know if you're four or five you're staying in the post like you're not shooting just stay here and post up and that's, yeah. that's not me at all like I'm like five foot nine five ten so like I wanted to shoot and that's just like I had a growth spurt at one point so I'm used to like being a guard and then I just went from guard to being in the post and I didn't like that and I just didn't like the direction that was going because I knew I wouldn't get a college scholarship playing with him. So I, I quit <laughs> pretty much. And, um, but that kind of pushed off and made me move into another path of business. So after I stopped playing basketball, then I started getting more involved in like business organizations and things in high school and in college. So it kind of like, like I said, everything kind of happens for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Nice. That's so dope. Um, you ready for a little bit of story time? Story time. Burr, 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 story time. <laughs> story time. Okay. I'm ready for story time. Um so because your 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 name starts with a B, I'll take A. How about that? I'll take A and then I'll 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 okay. uh I'll keep notes of what our story is that we put together. This is going to okay. be good. All right. Uh, so I got A. I'll say amazing. Brittany. <laughs> Could. Drink. <laughs> oh Everything. that's too long that's too- yeah that is too long ah she kept me accountable i love this all right i'm taking my drink all right now you could take e since i had to drink <laughs> okay you said everything so i'll say uh-huh. everything uh-huh oh you're gonna say everything sorry i'm over here like yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from oh man okay <laughs> oh my day what's after him <laughs> uh so right now we're at amazing Brittany could drink everything from so I have G um Guadalupe <laughs> <laughs> okay that's the end of the sentence <laughs> Her internal. Oh my goodness. Jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're at Amazing Brittany could drink everything from Guadalupe, her internal. <laughs> Her internal so you said jukebox. Ju- so, so you said her internal jukebox. Okay. Yes. So her internal jukebox kept lifting. More. Is this <laughs> <laughs> was that too long? Was that did I 
We can both drink because it was a minute. Okay. Like, yeah, that was a hot <laughs> minute. I'll just. <laughs> So right now we're at Amazing Brittany could drink everything from Guadalupe. Her internal jukebox kept lifting more. <laughs> uh, on. Oh, uh, we we need an N. Oh, wait. wait J K L M N. Yes. Okay. Her internal jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> more oh my gosh near near yeah, I'll definitely drink <laughs> yeah we both drink it we we both drink it <laughs> lifting more near over oh man <laughs> oh no I'll drink it and I'll Something with a P. Uh, okay, so right now, right, Amazing Brittany could drink everything from Guadalupe. Her internal jukebox kept lifting more near over. Is, is it my turn? Pluto? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pluto? All right. Pluto. Query. Requested. Ooh. Sanitization. <laughs> two. Two? Okay. Uh two. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna drink. <laughs> I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink. Okay. So we're at Amazing Brittany could drink everything from Guadalupe. Her internal jukebox kept lifting more yeah. near over Pluto. Query requested sanitization <laughs> <laughs> to Sanit what's that? Oh, to undo. Undo. Ooh, okay. Berry. Um, wet. Ooh. Uh. Ooh, you got the hard one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Um. I know, it's the easy one. Xylophone. <laughs> But I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So read that. Read that again. Okay. So we got amazing Brittany could drink everything from Guadalupe. Her internal jukebox kept lifting more near over Pluto. Query requested sanitization to undo very wet xylophone. <laughs> 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 Very wet xylophone. Yet. Ooh, yet. Zapped. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. That's like some outer That's space type drink. stuff. That really yeah. was. That was some extra outer space type stuff. It really is. It must be like since tomorrow's the twenty first. Like I said, yeah. we're supposed to be getting superpowers. I don't know. I'm feeling something extraterrestrial. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have those? Mo I always feel like I'm just not from this planet. Do you ever have those moments of just? I must. I'm. I don't know where I've zapped into somebody's body, but I don't understand. I'm an alien right now. I, I'm terrestrial. <laughs> I feel like that sometimes. Like I don't know. Sometimes my mind just like floats, and I'm just like thinking about weird stuff. Yeah. And thinking about like life in general, and like the galaxy, and I'm like, we're just one small piece of something larger. Like I was, like, I know there's other life out there. I don't know. Yeah. I just start floating and thinking about weird stuff. So I'm just like, I don't know if I'm from. 
No, I totally feel that though. Like I feel like either A, I'm not from this planet, or I was I'm from another time and they put me here. I don't and I'm still like, wait, am I like who am I? Like what did what what was the what was my path? Like yeah, not what was my path, but like reincarnated yeah like your past life you used to be a certain way and maybe like i don't know maybe your past yeah. life appears in your present life and you're like stuff is weird <laughs> yeah like just exactly that like i feel like sometimes i'll be like dang what happened like what <laughs> how like how did i get here you know, and it's like, I've been in this body, but I have, there's been another person that's taken over this body really quick. And then it's like, oh man, like, what did they do <laughs> during the time that I was gone? <laughs> Were you, you ever? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, and the crazy thing is, is I'll have these random moments. I don't, not smoking, no drinking, no, these are very sober <laughs> But have you ever had those moments sober? <laughs> Probably, yes. I just think about stuff all the time randomly. I'm just like, yeah. I just zone out kind of. It's probably when I'm driving because, you know, you're driving. I feel like, I was like, man, how I even get here? Because I feel like I wasn't even paying attention on the, yeah. <laughs> like, I just like zone out, like driving. Me I too. Think. I'll just be driving. I'm like, I'm really glad I didn't get into an accident because I've just been <laughs> zoned out and I'm like, wait, I'm Especially already in here. California. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. In California. Yeah. We don't know how to drive in California. Unfortunately, this is. Uh, they can't drive here either. I mean, it's more traffic with the California, but in Chicago, they just don't care. They just like cut you off. If, if not giving a fuck was a town, it would be Chicago. I feel like yes. I've been in I Chicago agree. and I'm just like, y'all just don't care. Like what's <laughs> I really don't. I was just like, wow. And I've adapted because I'm not originally from Chicago, but I've just been here mm -hmm. for so long. I was like, look, I'm not gonna use my turn signal because you can't let them know your next move. You just gotta, you just gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, nah, yeah, nah, awesome. son, nah, I'm not gonna tell you what I did, what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just gonna do be it. surprised. I'm gonna just do it. Yeah, you just gotta do it because if you if you don't just do it, you're not gonna get there. That's, that's just how it is. That's so crazy. That's so interesting because I'm like, um, I'm putting on my blinker. I'm giving you the heads up right now no. because when you do some silly shit, then we gonna have a problem. Yeah, I feel Chicago that way sometimes. The but like, yes, they're just like, nah. We just going. <laughs> we don't give a damn. We just going. <laughs> Like you see my cars kind of turn this way. So just assume that I'm going this way. Like I'm not about to put my turn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's, that's so crazy. I mean, speaking of Chicago and random thoughts, I guess, uh, you know, being from Indiana, like you said, and now living in Chicago, when Common released his new album, Let Live or Let Love, <clears throat> And he came by the leader's uh, 1354 store. Um, you gave him a pair of Perico shoes. <laughs> okay, I just totally. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> How was that experience? And what did he say about the shoes that you gave him? Um, that was really dope because, number one, I didn't even know Common was there. Um, my guys over at leaders, they're like, hey common this is who we were telling you about so I was just like you were already talking about uh, my mind was blown because it's just like people the people that advocate for you when you're not around like that's super special um he was just like yo that's so dope like you made these um he was like yeah I, I need these in a 10 and a half and I was like let me go to the car real quick <laughs> so I was just like <laughs> you know make sure you always have a product on deck too like if you're selling something, make sure you always have it with you, whether it's on you or in your car, just make sure you have it. But um, he really liked the shoes and he just thought it was so dope like for a black woman to have her own sneaker. And he was just like, 
really supportive. He's super nice too, so that helped. Um, but yeah, I was super happy like that the guys over at Leaders were like advocating for me like that. So I really appreciated that. <laughs> that's so dope. That's so freaking dope that I, I mean because and that's a huge deal like common is a is shot town for real yeah you know really and yeah and he's that's, super yeah that's so that's so freaking dope congratulations on the, i mean that's that's a huge thing for you know common to to see and to know your shoe and to meet you and to know you and you know that's that's really special that's really yeah, really special. it was special. So I definitely have to hook him up with some other shoes, some other footwear. I need a plug. So <laughs> <laughs> if anybody is a plug out there that's listening, hit up Brittany. Right. I'm trying to trying to so, coordinate. You know, we're trying to, <laughs> you know, black people are the number one consumer for sneakers. So we need we need to be pushing our own like FUBU type thing for us by us. Mm -hmm. That's so real. That's so true. That's so true. And and I feel like black women also are one of the the biggest contributors to purchasing sneakers. Yeah. Why do you think there aren't as many women, black women at that, that are creating shoes, uh, sneakers in general? Um, it's really the barrier to entry. Like, again, outside of footwear, just most industries in general are mostly like male dominated industries. And, you know, when they're looking to hire different people, they're pulling in their friends, which are probably other guys, you know what I mean? Um, so I feel like there's real missed opportunity there for women because we just have to pretty much start from the bottom and try to work our way in. We can't, we don't have those connections with other people to pull us in. Um, I also feel like they didn't think women were really into sneakers. So they just kind of assumed, oh, you know, if it's a woman's sneaker, just make it pink, you know, make it red, put some glitter on it and it'll sell or make like a wedged sneaker. That's what they want. So they're just yeah. assuming these things that, they think women want and they don't have the opinions of real women in the room to help with these decisions. So it's just really weird. It's like, no, we don't want, you know, glittery shoes. We don't want pink shoes. We want the same shoes the men have. They just wanted those shoes in their sizes. <laughs> they, you know, the sizing for the men's shoes, you know, a lot of women can't fit those sizes. And they're just like, we didn't even want this. Like we want, we want what you have, but just in our size. So um, I think it's definitely just the barrier to entry to get into design. Again, not seeing people that look like them that are doing that. So they don't, you know, think that that's a possibility. Um, also the lack of finances because it's just so hard and expensive to, you know, start your own brand. So I think those are a few of the contributing factors to why we don't see that many women um, in that space. Absolutely. Yeah, that's... It's so unfortunate that we don't see enough of that and enough of that representation. Um, you know, like we were talking about earlier, going into the shoe store, it was always so discouraging, you know, yeah. to go into the store. You got the women's section that's like this big, you know, and, yeah. <laughs> and then you got the men's that's just, taking up the whole entire rest of the, the store. I know. It's so discouraging. It, it really is. It really was. And that's like why. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, you know, the trickiness was Zoom, man. It's 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 so crazy with the with the delays and all that. But, you know, with the walking around in like a men's shoe and then it's like, oh, you're wearing men's shoes and then you know, people make you feel some kind of way about, well, yeah, because y'all got a shitty selection and I like what the men have. Yeah. But I mean, I just thought they were dope anyway. So regardless of if it's, you know, women's or not, if I like it, I'm wearing it. I don't care 
what it looks like. That's just who I am though. Like I'm not, I don't think about the stigma. like, oh, this is for men. Then only men should be wearing it. Like I never had that mindset. If I like something then I'm going to wear it regardless of if it's for a guy or a girl, that's just me. Um, but now I see like today, everybody's wearing casual clothes. Everybody's wearing street wear. Um, so it's just funny because it's just like, I've been doing this my whole life. Like I've dressed this way and now it's kind of like a trend type thing. Yeah. Um, but I also have to shout out, I have to shout out one of my friends, AB Alex, because when I was wearing Jordans, like I said, I was annoyed because like everybody would have the same shoes on like the upcoming Monday. So he took me to a store in Indiana called Rise Skate Shop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, where are we going? Like we're, it was kind of like the suburban whitish part of the town like you know I don't even go in there into a skate shop but when we went in there it was like I think my life may have changed at that moment um because it was like all of these SB dunks SB blazers like shoes I've never seen before and that like changed everything because I was like oh my god like I'm only wearing these shoes and he was like don't tell anybody about the store because like I don't want anybody to like have the shoes that we have <laughs> And I was like, okay, because at that point, like, if you didn't get the shoes from there, like, you had to get them off of eBay. And like, we're in high school, so we don't have the money. Our parents were like, don't put my credit card information on the, you know, <laughs> at that point. So it was like, you're not, if the shoes aren't at the mall, you're not getting it. So when we found that store, like, we kept it on lock, like, and then when I would go to school, they'd be like, what are those? Like, oh my God, those are so cool. So like from that point on, I only wore SB blazers and SB dunks, like for the next four years. <laughs> nice. So shout out to Alex. <laughs> shout out to you, Alex. That's what's up. That's dope. <laughs> That's super dope. Yeah, because that was another thing. Like I never liked having the same shoes as other people that's the one thing that I was just like, man, why y'all all got the same shoes, all got the same shirt? Like, I used to get so upset when I would see somebody with the same thing as me, but you yes. know, it's, it's a different world now. It's definitely a different world. And yeah, it's definitely weird. Cause it's like back then we, we had social media, like we mainly just had like MySpace and Facebook, but now everything's so current. And then it's funny because like when you go to the mall now and you look, everybody like looks the same because everybody's like getting their style from the same places. And it's just, I, I'm glad I grew up, you know, when I did because I, you know, had my individuality and nobody looked like I did type thing. But now everybody kind of looks the same and that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. What does um, what does breaking barriers and inspiring style mean to you? Um, breaking barriers for me was breaking that glass ceiling, like breaking the stigma that sneakers are strictly for men, or um, breaking the barriers for women to get into the footwear industry as well. So, not having the men's and the women's sizing just have shoe they're just shoes it's not for speaking of shoes it's, just, it's unisex yeah, yeah. so breaking those, <laughs> breaking those barriers there and um inspiring style so again um i'm really high off of minimalism because if things are minimal it allows you to kind of dress up like do what you want with it um even if it's just the plain white sneaker you can paint on it you can do whatever you want with it. So just allowing the versatility when it's not too much going on with the sneaker. Uh, so it just inspires style. So that's how I came up with that that tagline. I think it I love fits that really well. I, lo I love yeah. that tagline. I love that tagline. Thank you so much for joining us and for, for sitting with us and hanging out and having some, some conversation. And I, I appreciate what you're doing. This is, that's so huge for so many folks, I, I think that you don't even understand how 
amazing. I think you know that you've hit amazing, but I don't think you understand the gravity of your level of amazing. So I appreciate you for taking the time to to speak with us and hang with us. Um, it's unisex sneakers is an incredible is incredible. Like it's just it's the shoe that I wish that I had growing up. I'm I'm I just cannot stop saying that. It's the shoe that I, I wish that I had growing up and it's the shoe that I'm going to get now because you you mm. use a lot of high quality materials as well. You use the, you know, leather and suede and and all of that stuff. And if folks are listening now and they want to invest, um, how can they reach you? Um, you can definitely visit me on Instagram mm. and Twitter, Clubhouse. Um, hey. No, but Instagram. <laughs> No, but on Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at Perico Shoes. And then um, you can also check out the website, pericoshoes.com. Perico. So you can always hit me up, I'll respond. Okay. Ooh, for sure. I'm going to drink to the Perry and to the shoes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this has been incredible. Before, uh, before we get out of here, what are some words that we usually end on some words of wisdom? Um, what would be your words of wisdom to folks that are out there as we enter this new year? Uh, they're, they're still looking to maybe start a business, to continue their business, to maybe relaunch their business. What are some, maybe some words of wisdom that you can leave them with? Um, I would say there's really no better time than now um there's never going to be a better time than now because like you'll always stall thinking oh I'll wait until I have this and this there's always going to be something else that you need to do to be prepared um so I always say just start just do it um you got to get out of your own head because you know it's really us that usually block our own blessings just because we're thinking so hard about so many different things but yeah, just start and learn as you go. You don't have to have everything together at once. Um, and do things that you're passionate about. You know what I mean? I know people are like chasing the money, but if your heart's not in it, don't do it. Because things are going to get really hard. And when they get really hard, are you going to continue to do it? Um, so definitely just start, make sure you're passionate about it and stay true to yourself. I love that. I feel that. Well, there you go. Straight from Brittany herself. Y'all, oh make sure you get your Perry Coes. Get your, um, you also have, uh, do you call them sliders or sandals? Because they, they call them, sli okay. So the, yeah. I had never heard them ever be called slides. I've always called them sandals. But get your slides. um Mm -hmm. <laughs> some flip-flop joints get all of that socks. oh yeah Shoes. well weren't you aren't you sold out of socks almost so i have some wool socks so those are good nice and cozy for the fall and the winter that you can still get those i have a few tie-dye socks left uh definitely have some slides flip-flops um you can wear them in the house, take it out the trash, things like that, or wear them out yeah. for sure. And then the sneakers, you can wear them for anything. So nice. I dig that. And, you know, I almost uh, forgot to ask this question. And this is like one of the main questions I wanted to ask you. And I've had such an amazing conversation with you. We were uh, pre kiki in, uh, we've been chilling, <laughs> talking, hanging. And I just, you know, you got me all, you know, so I, I totally forgot to ask you this, but as far as like when folks go to your website, since we've been talking about your website, your inventory, um, when they go to your website and they order your shoe, um, how is the shoe measured? Like, is it based off of like a men's size or how does that sizing work for folks that are? Yeah, it's basically um, in men's sizing. So if you're a woman, just size two sizes down. So if you wear a nine, then just get um, a seven. And then for men, it's just true to size. Okay. There you go. There you have it, folks. Now there ain't no question about what size is what. <laughs> go to the website, get your Perry Coes. 
They Period. selling out, y'all. They sell it. And is there any shoe that we can look for in the new year or anything we could? We um, could I'm working for? on some a new high top shoe. So I'm hoping to have that in the summertime. Um, I might release like some different color slides and some new accessories and things like that. But for sure, the white and the olives, those are running low on inventory. So those are the newest drops. So if you want those, make sure you go cop those ASAP. Nice. Okay. I will do because I saw some white ones. Uh, I, I think it's, was it the white gummies? I don't know. Yeah, I saw yeah. some shoes and I'm like, I need those. I need those. Yeah, I need okay. those. I need those. I, I was looking all throughout the website. Like, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. <laughs> so yes, that's, I, I will definitely be on that website and, and join in the email list. So y'all make sure that you, you hit up Brittany and for folks that are watching and listening, can folks slide in your DMS? I always forget to ask some people, can they slide in your DMS on some holla shit? Or are you just like, no, just only hit me up on some networking shit. Um, just on a networking tip, okay. but if you cute, okay. I might, you know, it depends. So we'll see, <laughs> but, uh, no, but I'm open. Like, if, if people need help or anything, I'm always like open to, to help out. Nice. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you again so much <laughs> for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. I have a lot of fun. So I appreciate you letting me share my story with you guys. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. You welcome anytime. So definitely hit us up. All right. Thank you so much. Like, huh? Real life and no TV. Millionaires stay greedy. No love and there's no grub. We got the homeless saying, Y'all better come my way. Y'all better come my way. Okay, and say, Y'all better come my way. I'ma make a statement day by day. Y'all better come my way. Y'all better come my way. Okay, and say, Y'all better come my way. I'ma make a statement day by day. Y'all better come my way. Y'all better come my way. Okay, and say, Y'all better come my way. I'ma make a statement day by day. Peace out, peace out,